This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm pleased to have Taz Doll and Isis, queen goddess of the band, the Barbed Wire Dolls, on my show. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. You've been in L.A. We've been here six months since December. Mm -hmm. December, at the end of December, was our first show here in L.A. We came here, you know, we had nothing booked, and we got the opportunity from the Roxy Theatre to give us our first chance and they gave us um, a Saturday at a really great slot at 10 o'clock and we just sold it out and it was wonderful. Taz, tell me the story. Um, you had your own band when you were in Greece, you lived in an artist community, that's how you knew Isis and essentially you guys played a festival and somebody from America was at that festival and they said you guys should come to America and you're like yeah that's a dream now there's a Rodney on the Rock connection. Now tell me about that. So imagine we're living in the mountains in an artist commune above the sea in Crete. It's with all these other artists and uh, we put on this big festival and it, it bombs financially, but it's great. And um, these people from LA come and they love us and they said, we love your band because we had put out our album on iTunes, but you know, no one had played it or anything. People were just buying it at shows in Greece. And they said, well, you should come to LA. That's where the center of music is. And we're like, that's a dream. That's, you know, it's a wonderful dream. Thank you. And then a few days later, we get an email from Rodney on the Rock from his assistant saying, from K-Rock saying, we want to play your music. Will you send us a CD? So we sent it. He call, you know, he says to call us at this time. So he calls him at the, on the, on the show and says, yeah, I'm playing you now for the first time. And we're like, that's the first time Barbara Dells are ever getting played on any radio in the world. And he says, why don't you come to America for a show? I'll put you on a K-Rock show. Next thing you know, we're selling everything. The cars, surfboards, skateboards, guitars, amps, anything we had of any value, including some very valuable things um, to buy the tickets. And so in the, in the excitement of coming to America, we forgot that, you know, it's expensive. So the people that came to LA, to the Crete to see us, invited us to their house for about a month until we finally got the Roxy who booked us. But even after the Roxy, we sold it out, we were freaking out, like, what are we gonna do now? And no one's booking us. And then, fired up booking Danny Rose, started calling us for the OC, and six months later, we played over 50 shows, and we're killing We've it. done about four residencies. Four, four residencies, three, left four and right. And then you had a residency at the Doll Hut. In the at the Doll, Doll Hut, Hut, on the Rocks. On the Rocks, the Viper Room. The Roxy. Now, at the Viper Room, coming up. Played the punk rock picnic on the main stage, on the, on the headline of small stage there. It's just happening, but it's really happening because we watched the decline of Western civilization, mm -hmm. which is a Greek director, Penelope Spheres. And when you think of punk, you think of the New York early days, CBGBs, you know, the Ramones, all that stuff coming out there, Blondie. Then you go to London, Sex Pistols, The Clash, you know, and so forth. And then you have LA, you have The Germs, you have X, you have Black Flag, you have The Go-Go's, all the things that started there. And Rodney was, the center of all of this. He was the first to play the Sex Pistols, the Ramones, Blondie, you know, everybody. And we just, you know, honor him for, for being such a great, important person in rock and roll. When Rodney calls and says, come and play my show, you do you it. You go. But at the same time, I believe it took a great step of faith on your part. There's always signs out there that are there, always in your face telling you that you should follow a certain path, especially when you believe it in your heart, that that path could possibly lead to what you wish to experience. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take those opportunities, you know, life doesn't give them to you on a continuous basis, you know? And so when that happened, it was like the twilight zone. It's like, ding, 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 there you go. I'm giving it to you, go ahead, just make that leap. And I mean, it's it's difficult to do at first because you honestly don't believe that you deserve that, you know, you could actually have your dreams come true, even if you don't see it already coming true. You know, you just see that small little path of faith. It's difficult to take that leap and we did it and it's, it's really actually coming out even better than we thought. I mean, there's a whole new scene coming out of, um, of LA right now and somehow we're involved in it as well. And it's amazing, and it's more than we could have even imagined. And we're here at the Eric Blaring Out Show. How exciting is that? What was it like living in the artist community in Crete? Unbelievable. I mean, you have to remember that Greece is like, it's the five-star resort out of all of Europe. You know, the whole of the world, all of the world goes to Greece 
for vacation, especially in the summertime. And Crete itself is such a magical island. It's where the Minoan civilization started. At the artist commune, we were staying there for about three years and um, all these artists had come there on a continuous basis through these past years and right now um, five of them that had come on separate missions to uh, the Icarus have now um, started a new band called Group Love which is doing great all over America and they signed to Atlantic Records. Um, we've had writers there, photographers, um, filmmakers that are all, all doing fantastic and that's where Barbara Dolls came out of. Barbara Dolls came out of the Icarus and it was an idea that just came together. And I started singing there, I'd never sang before, and that pulled it out of me. Singing is a musical talent. <laughs> yeah, but it's nothing like technical, you know? I mean, I've only been singing about two years and it came naturally, so it's not something I actually really had to, like, you know. You didn't work at it. Right, I didn't really work at it, except for shows and stuff, but that doesn't really count. So, it's not like I decided to do something and then pick up, you know, something and make it my own. It just kind of came out naturally when we decided to do Barbed Wire Dolls, and I'm like, you know what, I want to sing, I want to be a singer, and I started singing, and ta-da! So you're around all these artists that are all creating and living free, because you know, when the artists come there, they're usually paid for and they have nothing, they don't have to worry about time and money. They just go there and do their art. And they don't care about if it's people like it or not. They have to do it for themselves. And so when you're sitting there, and every Friday night in the courtyard, in this old 600 stone, you know, year old stone courtyard with fires going on, all the singers that were there, like artists, like musicians, including me, would sit in the corner and we would pass the acoustic guitar around and play one original song that we've written there or something. And so he goes around and she ended up learning all the songs from all the artists in, in this one summer of 2008. And people were like, why don't you start it? Why don't you sing in a band? And the next thing you know, she's like, will you write me some songs? I'm like, yeah. And uh, it just took off. It's just like we know that there's a whole new explosion of, of artistic creativity coming out in the world right now from every avenue. And, and, and all the conglomerates that are controlling everything are having to rethink and reshape things because they're seeing that their models have failed quite a bit. And people, they have realized that people are not stupid. They might be sheep and they might follow things, but they're not stupid. And they know the difference between a shitty movie and a shitty album and a, and a fake pop star and someone that doesn't even write their own music. And we're going back, Barbara Dolls are going back to the roots of rock and roll, the roots of the punk scene, the roots of the new wave scene, the roots of direct, straight ahead rock and roll that is basic. You can learn it, you can watch it, and you say, I can do that. It's guttural. It's meaningful and it's urgent and it's there to, to bring down all the hypocrisy of, of what's out there. And um, there's no solos, there's no backups. The album we're recording now is recorded live in one take with a great big producer who's done everything from Offspring to Alice in Chains to so forth. What producer? Um, Brian Karlstrom. Okay. And um, worked with Dave Jordan from Chains Addiction and Rolling Stones. Well, how was it working in the studio with them? Well, the great thing about them was they connect to our music straight away. Oh. After they saw us live. As After soon as they, they saw us live, live yeah. they said, you got to get into the studio yeah. and record this stuff now. They caught the vision. Yeah. Because before, when you, when you see our videos, you see our music, you know, okay, you might compare it to this and that, but when you come see us live, yeah. you it's know it. It's always, that's huh? always what it's about. What was your first impression of Rodney Bingeheimer? We had watched his movie before mm. we actually met him. Yeah. And um, so when I met him, it was like a family member or like mm -hmm. a best friend or something. Because when you see someone on the screen, you feel like you're connected to them. You know what I mean? And especially when you're expecting to meet them. And um, we took him to dinner at Cantor's and we had a great conversation. We had so much fun. We filmed the whole thing. And he's just such a humble and sweet guy. He's very humble. Very humble. And he's so great. He, almost doesn't recognize his greatness. When you came to LA, did it live up to your expectations? More than 100%. Well, we knew that we wanted to stay in Venice, and that's where we are, right? We're, we're in Venice Beach, because it reminded us of home. We skate and surf, so we need to be near the beach. And Venice is just so multicultural and artistic that it really helps to our happiness. And we have to be happy, because then that explodes into our music, and to the people that are connecting to our music. I mean, like I said, it was difficult in the beginning because when you make that leap, you don't realize that things can go very smoothly if you wish them to. I mean, there's people out there that just want drama, 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 but if you let that go 
and you just be and let life you know, give you everything that you need at that precise moment, then it's very possible. We looked for two months or a month on Craigslist to find a place. Then the perfect place opened up. We got it that day, we moved in. We're still living there, it's amazing. It's the dollhouse. It's the dollhouse. It's the H the I wanna go. It's very cool, <laughs> it is very cool. We've but the thing so that hit us with LA place. is the Sunset Strip. You drive up and you see the whiskey and you say, my God, I've seen that in movies. Anything in LA, it, you see, all you see in Greece is movies, movies of LA and so yeah. forth. And you're sitting there and you're like, wait a second, I'm here. You know, there's the whiskey, there's the Roxy, there's the, you know, the Troubadour, and there's Dogtown, Venice, there's the skate park, there's, hey, there's Tony Iowa, there's Jay Adams, you know. There's Lemmy. There's Lemmy. I mean, she met Lemmy like the first night she was there and they were hanging out. You know, and we went to the Rainbow and then hang out. It's, it's, it's LA. We've met so many celebrities and rock stars already. But the thing that surprised me is actually Orange County. Uh -huh. Because we've been playing there a lot and our first show there, uh, when Danny Rose booked us at the Doll Hut, it was like going back home. Everyone takes care of each other there. It's really a great community down there. And they all know each other and it's all like a big happy family. It's really amazing. There are so many bands in OC and LA that this whole new punk revolution is happening. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, so this whole stuff you're seeing here tonight and all these bands are gonna be all exploding all over the world because the new punk revolution has started again out of LA and out of the heart of the mecca of the OC, punk rock world, which is the OC. So we're blessed to be here. We still have so many great people and great bands. Rock for unity together. And the fact that uh, we've connected to that is very much like living the American dream. First of all, the, the OC is the mecca of punk rock. There are more punk bands playing every week than anywhere else in the world. And they all get it. And so we're playing like these hardcore punk rock shows and the punk rock picnic and all these different things. And we're playing our music. We're not changing anything. And we're connecting with everybody. Like the promoter of Punk Rock Picnic said, you know, when you play this one show, a lot of these hardcore OC people that have been around since the early 80s and the 70s, they really want to see what Barbar Dolls are about. And, and you converted them. They, they were into it. They understood it. They get it. They like it. And that was, that's a big, to me, that's a compliment. This is what a touring van looks like. What's in there? Oh, wait, look at this. Look at this guitar. Guitar case. This is, this is a BB King's guitar. Well, it was, obviously. Given to an old bluesman. Bluesman was a heroin addict. Couldn't afford it. And he sold it to me. Are these guys here? Yeah. Yeah. Where did you get this, bro? Madison, Wisconsin at a jazz club, blues club at 6 in the morning. For 1200 1200 bucks, I think it was. 70s Les Paul standard. Only a few made this year. This wood. They stopped making because it was too heavy. It was stolen for a year and a half. I had to put a contract out on somebody to get it back. Really? It's the only way I could get it back. I've played this guitar for 20 something years now. Do you feel that you're selling a certain sexuality? Definitely. But I'm not necessarily selling. I'm just expressing how I feel mm -hmm. and how the music makes me feel. And there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. That I'm possibly more sexual on stage than off stage is definitely yes. But that's just the way the music makes me feel. And there's nothing wrong with sexuality, you know. I do an orgasm on stage. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Barbar Dolls are four people, as you know, you come to see us live. We have Voodoo Doll, the bass player, and Greg Doll, the drummer, and um, they've got their own fan base. 
groupies come and hang out to watch them play, which is good. The whole band is a sexy band. You know, we have band gorgeous afterwards, you know. The point is, whatever happened to sex and rock and roll? For the past 20 years, it's just been monotone. Like the rock and roll, it's just kind of just been in the okay zone. It hasn't done anything taboo. Well, anytime back years ago, people used to go to shows because they, you know, it's exciting. They might hook up with a girl or if they were a guy with a girl, whatever. And it was fun and exciting. And then everybody went to raves or something. I don't know what to find sex. But I mean, there's nothing like a rock and roll show. And people that come to our shows, we're finding out they're getting laid. So we're really happy about that. <laughs> as far as iconic female vocalists, and performers, who are some of the people that you look up to? I'm definitely influenced by a lot of female front women, like Deborah Harry, mm -hmm. Courtney Love, even Karen O from the Yeah Yeahs, mm -hmm. you know? I don't really compare myself to them because I've actually looked and studied male front men. What do you feel the barbed wire doll's message is? Be who you are, express it, and just, you know, it's an inner revolution. You gotta fight for your right to be who you wanna be, party, whatever. Just don't step on other people's feet and they won't step on yours. So, you know, no one's stopping you. So stop blaming other people, take responsibility and go follow your dream, live it. Because it's just you stopping yourself and you making it happen. So just do it. The drug scene. We haven't actually seen that scene at all. From the sunset to the ocean side. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any drugs have been used or around me mm. in our whole LA experience. Except for weed, because that's legal here. Mm -hmm. But um, apart from that, no, I haven't seen it. And you know, if if people think it's cool or they want to use it, it's their own lives. I've got nothing to say about that. Uh, we personally don't use any drugs. We don't do any drugs at all. We smoke a lot of cigarettes and drink coffee, but that's about it. Drugs is a means to escape from your life and from your reality. And we're loving our reality right now. And I. If we're loving it now, we'll keep on loving it in the future. How would you define your fashion sense? I couldn't wear this stuff unless I played in this band. I always like to feel like a poser. And I love it, and I love wearing it, and I love playing in a band. That's who we are as people. We feel very comfortable. Um, I got the material from like this little girl's dress at Salvation Army. That's where I get all my clothes from. Because, um, you know, to support Salvation Army. And they should actually sponsor me. I buy that much stuff. Actually, I don't buy that much stuff because I don't have the money. But when, you know, I do see something, I buy it. And um, it was a little girl's dress, and I love the material. So how much of that did you take off the original Oh, it dress? was about, like, up to here, the dress. Okay. And, like, I made a top out of it, and then I made, the, like, this bra thingy out of it. It's fun. You know, and you put your own self into it, and you put your own, you know, ideas, and it comes out, you know, the way that you actually wish to look. Instead of buying something that at the end you'll probably throw it away anyway because it has no sentimental value to you whatsoever. I'm not wearing this, I'm wearing my surf trunks, and I'm going, well, I'll put my wetsuit on and surfing. How would you define your spirituality, Isis? You know, I believe that I'm the creator of my universe, mm -hmm. and I believe that everyone has the power and the will to do what they want with their lives and that no one is judging them. They just have themselves to be judged by. Um, but you know, it's each their own. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have my own ethics. I have my own, yes, you know, taboos and non-taboos. And if I cross the line, then I cross the line. There's no one there to judge me, just myself. I just do my best to live in Zen every moment. And uh, I've studied all, most religions and gone through them. And, studied them and, and found that, you know, in the end, we are nature and we are creators and we are all one and there's nothing but love and what you cause another, you cause them to yourself. So if you want to make drama in your life, cause drama in other people and they'll come right back. If you want to cause happiness, you want to experience happiness, cause happiness and come right back. And, and I, you know, everyone can believe what they want to believe and, uh, you know, I'm not here against anything. I'm just living my dream. And, and living in the dual reality of reality and society's world. And it's, it's a fun game and I'm enjoying it. Uh, who are some of your favorite idols that you've met while you're here in LA? Eric Blair. You, mister. We saw uh, you on TV before we ever is. met you. Okay, I met Lemmy, which is uh -huh. pretty freaking cool. Love Lemmy. <laughs> the bass player for L7, yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Finch. Finch. We've been yeah. talking to Steve, Steve Jones, the Sex Pistols mm -hmm. guitarist, yes, we have. on email about doing some things. And we haven't met him in person, but 
just talking to him about all this other stuff is kind of wild. That's fantastic. Think, I mean, I love the Sex Pistols. That's, oh. that's what took me from classic rock. Yeah. Into punk. How, how have the barbed wire dolls music sales been on iTunes? Non-stop. It's going all over the world. I mean, in the last two months, we've hit about 500 outside of America and outside of Greece getting into us and stuff. And, and um, well, that's why, why, why right now we're talking to a few managers and labels, record labels, to get this thing to the next level, you know? Because we've done so much on our own, we've done everything by ourselves, and we're getting to the point where it's, we need to focus. We've got like 30 new songs. We're actually gonna go to rehearsal this next week. We haven't rehearsed in five months. So we can actually work on some new songs. We have so many new songs, but we, we're just so busy, and it's time to get some people to do this, some people to put the record out, some people to do publicity, some people to do distribution, do the managing. We signed a publishing deal, which is great, and gave us security here. Oh, you know, wow. that's just, fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. really great. Man, wonderful. you guys are just living the dream right now. It doesn't happen for everybody. There's opportunities It can for happen for time. anyone. Everybody's dream is possible as long as it doesn't step on other people's toes and you know that you can do it yourself. Because people will come to contribute to you. I mean, every day then something new comes in and we're like, okay, you know what? We just can, we fashion like a big fire. It's a bonfire and it keeps getting brighter and people come and when they contribute to that fire, they became one, and it helps them. I mean, everyone that has helped us so far could probably turn around and say, I'm doing better because I helped them. I started booking them, and now I'm doing better. You know, it's part of this energy that we have that, that the world exists. We're part of the energy that it just keeps growing, and so we look forward to being able to help people, and we, we are open for other people to help us. And. Um, Unity. It just happens. It's unity. It's all about unity. And speaking about unity, one of the things that you were talking about earlier was that there's this new scene that is blowing up right now and barbed wire dolls are a big part of it and it has to do with unity. There needs to be change in the music industry. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a change because it's not helping them, it's not helping us, and it's definitely not helping, you know, the, the civilians. <laughs> so, um... There is a, a lot of bands with great music and all they need is an opportunity like us to get our music out there. And instead of working against each other, we've decided to work with each other. And that's where the whole unity comes in, where we host a Rock for Unity festival, where it's 10 bands, we play for free for the fans to thank the community for helping us, giving us shows, and um, all the bands that have helped us help each other. And so this is it. This movement it's is the again, new yeah. punk rock revolution. It's only happening because all these bands existed before we came here, but they bitched and argued and I don't want to play with you and I, I want a sound check. And, and we came here and said, what? We want a show. And so suddenly there's like 20 bands that we're playing shows a lot with. And the only difference is, is that they're having opportunities. All these opportunities are opening. We got a publishing deal, which is like, wow, suddenly we got all this money from the publisher. It means it's vital, it's urgent, it's mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. It's viable now, you know? And suddenly they're all thinking, well, this can happen. So suddenly the, the dream starts going, I want to play rock and roll, but I want to get it past the OC. I want to get it to the Sunset Strip. So when we play the Sunset Strip, we bring all these bands from the OC to play with us. And they love it. They're like, yeah, okay, we're playing the Sunset Strip. Now we're bringing some Sunset Strip bands back to the OC. But the main thing is that everybody keeps coming saying there is a new punk explosion happening out of LA and out of the OC and it's like a new punk revolution is what somebody termed it and we just love that term, new punk revolution, because this is where it should come from. I mean, it's either going to come from London, New York or LA and New York is too busy, you know, critiquing plays, I don't know what they're doing, London's, you know, too busy still into their raves and stuff and LA is like working man's punk rock. Mm -hmm. Everyone's playing, supporting, turning up. No sound check, no problem. Crank it, plug in, show up, play. And so this is where it's happening. All the labels are here. You've got all the good punk rock labels here. They're all taking interest in all what's happening. Look how good you guys got it. You can actually play shows. You can actually put out fires. You can do the work and get people there. If no one shows up, it's your problem. Yeah. It's not the club. <laughs> Another person, another person. So what the hell are you going to do about it? Are you going to change? Are you going to let someone else be? 
was in Greece, I mean, it's just a whole other world. I mean, you know, it's you play once every six months. That's that horrible. Is, you know? yeah. Oh my gosh. And then if it rains that night, you might, you know. Yeah. And here we're like, what are you guys bitching about? You guys can tour, you can play, you can just get a magazine and go book yourself in Oceanside. You can go to San Diego. Don't bitch to me. Yeah. I've been where there's no opportunities and there's no, and so and they're like, really? This is, yeah, man, you're, you can, it can happen. This is the LA dream. Isis, what's next for the barbed wire dolls? Album's coming out soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, once it's done, uh, it's called The Masturbator. Because mm -hmm. if you want to get your rocks off, you have to do it yourself. Hopefully some sort of tour because we really... If we get like one day break without playing a show, we freak out. We wish to like play on a continuous basis. And right now we're playing once a week and it seems like a big spurs. So we'd love to go on tour, get some merchandise out. Um, and just keep doing what we're doing and keep playing with different types of bands and helping each other and... I'm enjoying it now, so I want to keep doing that in the future. Taz Dahl. Thank you, Mr. Eric Blair. Isis Queen Goddess. <laughs> Thank you for being on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with Taz Dahl and Isis Queen Goddess of the band Barbed Wire Dolls signing off. The Blaring Out show.